Gwent died a little this week. At least for me. This might sound hyperbolic, which isn't uncommon if you're watching a YouTube video, but it's not. If you missed the news, CD Projekt Red decided to cut support for both the Xbox One and PS4 version of the game. The game will receive a final update next week that will effectively freeze it, locking console players in their own little box. The game remains playable in that state until June of next year, after which it will be completely shut down and removed from stores. Console players will have one chance to transfer their account data over to a GOG account so they can continue playing on PC or mobile. Now, those are the facts, nothing we can do about that now. The decision has been made and we are going to have to live with it. I do want to take the time today to talk about why this happened and what the consequences are. I'll try to avoid speculation for the most part, but it's a heartbreaking decision for both players and developers that in my mind needs to be discussed a bit further. Let's dive into the why. CDPR has been quite open about that actually. With the release of the iOS version of the game and the ongoing development of the Android version, they feel that they cannot adequately support 4 and soon 5 platforms at once anymore. This statement in itself however feels contradictory. Grant has had support for 3 platforms for over 2 years. PC, PS4 and Xbox One. They themselves decided to invest in and develop an iOS version of the game, upping the platform count again to 4 and with the Android version up to 5. If you remove support for two platforms, you drop back down to three, which was the situation all along, but you now have invested a serious amount of development work into making two new versions of the game. If the cost was minor, since the game is built using Unity, then the cost to support all versions would be equally minor and it wouldn't be a factor as well. Which brings us to the big one, revenue. The reasoning to drop the console versions is a financial one. Of course it is. The PC and mobile versions are a lot more popular than the console versions, says CDPR statement, so if they want to scale down on development costs, the logical conclusion is to cut the least popular platforms. Popularity is an interesting choice of words though, since again, it really comes down to revenue. The latest report from CDPR indicates that only 4% of Gwen's revenue originated from console players, with PC players representing 28%, and iOS players a whopping 68% of the pie. Seems cut and dry, no? The problem in looking at these numbers is that it's lacking context. PC and console players have been playing Gwent for over two years, and we can assume that the majority of the current player base is dedicated, therefore. Dedication means lots of playtime, in-game resources and a large card collection. Those players don't have a lot to spend their money on. They won't spend it on kegs since they have most cards and enough resources to make any new ones and cosmetics will only ever appeal to a small subset of players. Revenue also doesn't equal player numbers. But since CDPR doesn't disclose player numbers we have no idea what the real split is. Compare that to iOS which has only been live for a few weeks and the comparison starts to feel a bit unfair. The big batch of new players coming in with a mobile release all have to start from scratch and will therefore be a lot more tempted to spend money on kegs or packs. I would have loved to see a comparison in a year from now, but it's clear we'll never get there. One thing that really bothers me in this decision is the timing of it. The success of the mobile version was clearly the deciding factor to kill off the console versions, but holding off on the news has some nasty side effects. Transferring your console account resources and progress to a GOG account is only possible when you have no Gwent progress yet on said GOG account. But because of the release of the mobile version, many console players created an account to play a few matches on the iOS version as well. An account which now can't be used to house their console progress. CDPR's reluctance to provide this transfer functionality at the time of the mobile release has completely ruined any chances of an easy transition to either PC or mobile since those players will have already used their main email address to create a now useless account on which they may or may not have spent money on already. I'm hoping we will get a fix for this to make the transfer a bit easier or to merge accounts or otherwise Gwent will lose even more players than they already will. Again, that revenue percentage of 4% doesn't necessarily equal that only 4% of players are actually playing on consoles. That being said, it's clear consoles don't bring in as much money as the PC version, which is kinda sad. 
It was clear on stream that Pavel Burza and Jason Slama were really struggling to bring the news. It can't have been easy and I appreciate the gravitas with which they explained the decision. These guys really love the game they're working on and that really shows in the stream. But a decision like this might nevertheless have an impact on CDPR's otherwise pretty spotless image. It's a sign of the times. CDPR has always made single player experiences with expansive DLCs, expansive not expensive, that always gave you a good value for your money. In an industry filled with loot boxes, microtransactions and overworked developers, CDPR has always been the good guy. But because of that focus on offline experiences, they've never had to worry about most of these controversial topics. Gwen changed that for better and definitely for worse. Now they need to continuously support multiple platforms instead of just once. Every update needs to work on every platform and all that work needs to be financed. And because of those costs, the business model needed to change. At first it was pretty straightforward. Gwent is free to play and you can buy extra card kegs for real money, but nothing prohibited you from playing a lot and earning the cards that way. They're basically loot boxes, but those are still acceptable in a free to play game, especially card games, from which the concept of a loot box originated. Gwent has always had periods where the player base dwindled, but it usually recovered most of the time. The last months, however, marked a steady shift in the Gwent business model, slowly adding more monetization. Every expansion came with one or two packs of kegs that steadily became more and more expensive. Cosmetics shifted dramatically from being purchasable with Meteorite Powder, the game's premium currency which could be earned in-game, to exclusively being purchasable with real money. Quite a bit of money even. $6.99 for the latest card pack, $7.99 for a board skin, and $8.99 for a leader skin. Not really micro anymore and I'm afraid of where this trend will lead. I think this shift in cost is also the reason why a lot of the existing player base stopped spending money, because they could compare to a time where cosmetics were earnable in-game, which is sometimes supplemented by buying some extra meteorite powder from the store. Mobile players don't have this frame of reference, so they see no issue with the prices. I'm guessing once they've spent a few bucks on the game, the urge to spend the same amount of money every few weeks will quickly dissipate for most mobile players as well. The decision to cut console support only adds to that fear of what's to come. It leaves a lot of players with a bad taste because if they don't have a PC or iOS device, all their progress and purchases are gone forever. And I understand that that makes them feel like CDPR just took their money and ran away with it. I definitely don't see CDPR as that type of development company just yet, but I can understand how some people might feel that way now, but I guess we'll see. It might be just what Gwent needed to stay alive on the remaining platforms for a long time. To end this rather serious video, I just want to say I still love this game. I'm just really disappointed to see it drop support for my favorite platform. I'll probably continue making videos once I figure out how to record from my phone or tablet, so don't worry about that. If the transfer goes smoothly, I'll be able to continue playing as I do now. My heart just goes out to all those players who don't have that option. I'd really like to hear your thoughts about this issue. Are you glad CDPR can now focus on the PC and mobile versions, or are you disappointed with their decision as well? And that's it for today. Check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynut. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk or leave a comment down below if you want to discuss this further with me. Any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwendage. Goodbye.